Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Zitnik Trains. And uh, today we're going to talk about tropical island scenery, Florida type scenery in some places. Um, this is a new clinic for me, and so it's uh, we're going to kind of go and see how it goes here. But just bear with me if you have to. My name is John Addison, by the way. And uh, we're going to start out right here. This is crystal clear caulk and I'm going to start out just doing a demonstration of this. Some of you have seen this before but I'm going to put a little bit on here. Now the clear caulk it won't work so what you're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate it right here with my fingers. You use a small brush to get it where you want it around other stuff. And I'm just doing this water here again over the top of it. Now the island diorama that I did, I actually poured magic water first. Well, if you can see that real good. Now that goes on milky, but it'll dry clear. Now when it's dry, I take this stuff right here. This is a uh, Mod Podge, super brilliant. And all you do, I stick my finger in it like this. The same process. Don't rub it. You don't have to rub it hard. You just want to rub it. Be thorough everywhere. You need a small brush to uh, get it where you can't get it with your finger. Again, I'm doing all this right here. You won't be able to really see that on camera. It gets a little milky right now, but it'll dry clear. Now, like I said, the beauty of this stuff is that you want to rejuvenate your water. And I've talked about this in my water clinic before, but I'm saying this again because this has to do with the water and everything else. Again, you notice the color. Color is all important the shading from the shore to the darker deeper water is most important whether you're doing a resin pour like I did on this one over here that you'll see later or you just do uh, caulking on the top you've got to make that shading right Bob Ross talks about it uh, here you go you can just pass that around now I want to talk about the uh, palm trees because the palm trees are essential for this kind of modeling. Now this is what they look like when you get them from Amazon. They're not too bad but there are some imperfections in them. Okay and I'm going to show you real quick what you do. I can't see anything without my glasses. You go in here and you just start trimming off the imperfections. I usually use a smaller scissors than this and you have to go underneath the fronds. Some trees you get will not have hardly any imperfections and others will have quite a few. I'm not sure why that is but it's just the way it is. And you make sure that you go through and get all this stuff off You'll see them because it'll be pretty apparent as you turn the tree. You see various things on there. If a frond's still messed up on the bottom, I just kind of trim it into a uh, like the shape of the frond. Don't worry about it because at the time you color it, it won't really matter. But again, you're going in and getting all the imperfections out. Now I'm not going to get everything out on this one because. The next step you have to do is more to do with more imperfections on here. Now, whenever they injection mold this, there's always a parting line here on each side of the tree. So I take my razor knife and I scrape that until it disappears. If you don't scrape that, what will happen is when you go to 
when you go to paint it, that parting line will show up. So don't be afraid to be be rough with this part. It'll only it'll only enhance the trunk of the palm tree. Being rough with it, being aggressive with your knife, just don't cut yourself. <laughs> As I've done before. Now, after you get all the imperfections cut, and after you scrape the trunk, then you have to spray it with a, I spray it with a Krylon flat fixative. It's a um, stuff you can buy. I bought mine online. And sometimes you can find it at Home Depot or Lowe's. But that's what I spray them all with. I take a whole bunch of them, have them all set up on a uh, wax paper like this and foam board and I spray them all with that. That's the first thing I do. Now after they're sprayed, then it comes this part right here. This is evergreen. This is a real pretty green. It's a real dark green though. It's uh, And this, I don't think that's going to come out any other way. No. There. The paint's drying out on me. Okay, after you get that out, what you want to do is take your brushes, which I have somewhere in here. I'll just use any old brush will work. This brush will work. Now, I'm mixing the yellow into the green to kind of tone the green down some. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and start highlighting these branches. I'm kind of dry brushing the paint on, but it's kind of kind of heavy dry brushing. Right now I've got like a yellow green going on because I want it, what you want to do is you want to create the illusion of the light hitting the tree. And to do that, you need that yellow in there, otherwise it's not going to look right. I'll hold this up to the camera, and when I'm done, I'll pass this tree around so you can see what they actually look like. Of course, this tree has not been not been sprayed with flat fixatives, so it's not gonna paint is not gonna stick that well to it. It stick right now, but it may come off later. And you definitely want to spray it first before you paint it when you're doing these because otherwise now you can see this a little bit there and it's important that you leave the center kind of dark because that will create more depth in your tree and more shadows. Now this is raw sienna. And now what I'm going to do is show you the bottom fronds. I'm going to mix this with some yellow. And I'm going to do these bottom fronds a little bit. You also, you can use some black down here on the bottom. I'll pass one around too that's, that's done already so that you can see Again, I'm doing pretty heavy, as you can see. It's pretty darn heavy what I'm, I'm doing there because you want it to, definitely want it to show. You could put some black in there too. Um, I also have this color khaki, which is a real nice, nice color. Dip my brush in there. And you can even come in with some uh, some white if you wanted to at some point. But the idea is you want these lower fronds to be dying. Now I didn't have time on this diorama, but what I would normally do is I take some of these fronds, I take them off, cut them off, 
and lay them underneath the palm trees. They're dead fronds, but I had no time because I was working on this at 1.30 in the morning last night. <laughs> so I just didn't have time to do anything else. So now another technique that you can do, and I'm going to take this. Where's my second plate at? I know I had a second plate. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. You need another one, John? Um, Thought I had a second plate here, but I don't see it, so that's okay. This is uh, static grass, and this is kind of a almost a hay color. And what we're going to do here now is I'm going to mix this up. Oh, thanks. Okay, I'm going to put this on this plate so you can see it better. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to get some of this black here. This is really payment, but very close to black. And I'm going to go up in here and just put some of this around up in here on these coconuts up in here. Now while it's wet, I'm going to sprinkle on this static grass. The dark will give me the shadow I want. This also helps to hide the imperfections of the, of the palm tree. Now, one of the last things I do is I'm going to take this khaki and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stencil this on the tree, on the trunk. Some raw sienna. You can see that right there. I love raw sienna. It's one of my favorite colors and so much so many uses for it in the hobby from rust to you name it more khaki let's see we get a little black going here imperfections in the palm Now you can kind of see that, again I'll hold it up to the camera here, and you can kind of see what's going on with that. I'm going to put that right here. <clears throat> now here's one that's done. This guy is done all the way. Now when I do these, because I need a lot of palms. I have a lot more at home because I plan on extending this to the, uh, I'm going to add a, I have a bunch of buildings built in O scale, so I'm going to extend it to a harbor with a track coming out. The train's just going to go back and forth. That's why those rocks are there on the end because that way I can connect it up to the rocks, the other one, just push them together and they'll match. And it won't be, you know, you won't be able to tell the difference. It, it'll look like all one piece, but it won't be, of course. And here, I'll hold this guy up so you can see him. But he's kind of got just, just everything you want on a, on a palm. And these are, these are from Amazon. And uh, they are, I needed so many of them. I couldn't go to Scenic Express and buy them because you get, you know, they have some really nice palms at Scenic Express, but they're like two for 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. And you start talking about that and they're real nice. I mean, there's hardly any cleanup on them or anything. You just, you know, you just come right out of the box. They have some here in the store, the same thing. There's not a lot of cleanup on them, but you need, when you need so many of them, you're, you know, 
like things like a static grass, of course, that comes from the from the uh, store, and uh, crystal clear caulking that I demonstrated earlier that comes from the store. But some stuff you just can't, you know, you just can't use that way. Now, like I said, the palms you do all at once. I'm going to pass around these other guys. This one right here. I didn't put any fuzz on him yet, but. He's a little, he's a Washingtonian type cabbage palm. That's the way I describe him. Now this stuff right here, unfortunately I couldn't use this. I went to all the trouble of buying this and just spraying it with a flat fixative and then painting it and just, it was a lot of, they were a lot of work and there was a whole bunch of the bamboo. And I'll hold them up where you can see them. Unfortunately, unless you're doing larger than O scale, I wouldn't recommend these because they're just too big for O scale. They're more like 135th scale or maybe even 124th, but they're definitely it's just, it's just too big. You put an O scale figure next to them and they don't, they don't look right. They just don't. And they're beautiful. There's like no flash on them. Nothing. Really, really nice. But Again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend them, just for unless you're doing something like that, where you're doing something in a scale. Now, before I go to some more plants, I'm going to talk about the foam rocks. Here is a perfect example of one. And the way you carve these, I think I've demonstrated this before. Johnny and myself, Johnny G over there and myself, we did a whole bunch of foam rocks at the Lar at the Suncoast Club. Did a whole mountain of them really. They're very simple to carve out of the gray foam and I know some of you are going to ask me, okay, where do you get the gray foam? I don't know. <laughs> You're just going to have to Google it and look for it because I can't tell you anything other than that. It's You can do them out of uh, pink foam. There's one rock right over there. I just put that on there to show you that you can make them out of pink foam, but when you do them out of pink or blue foam, every area has to be painted black before you can do anything else to it. You cannot have any, the tiniest speck of pink or blue will show in your photo, I'm telling you. So you want to make sure that every square inch is covered. Now. Again, I got this payment here, and I just paint this side of it real, the black real quick to show you. Now with the gray foam, of course, I don't have to worry if I, if I miss something, it's no big deal, you know, because it, you're, you're, it's not going to matter at all. But you miss something, you know, you miss something with a pink foam, <laughs> you're going to see it. Now, these are probably one of the easiest most forgiving rocks. Again, this is a big, this is a bristle filbert brush. And uh, this is an ivory white kind of thing. And I'm just going to demonstrate like I have before. But again, this is all part of the, the island scenery. Of course, you don't just do white, you do different colors. There, you can kind of see it, I think. Looks like it's still in focus there. Again, there's a, there's that. Now, people ask me a lot of times about my rocks. And the way you get barnacles on these guys is pretty, pretty simple. It really is. You just have the right kind of material. Here's what I'm looking for. 
all you do again these are foam rocks and you've got the barnacles and you've got the seaweed on and now the the green stuff on here is uh, scenic express super turf okay and the other is just your basic light green flocking and then there's also black pepper the black pepper represents the barnacles and that's what's on the bottom of that dock and all over that boat uh, these three things and all you do is you paint I mix a tacky glue and a little black and I paint where I want the stuff to do and then I just stick it in it kind of roll it around in it and set them aside to dry again here you can see it and then when they're dry I come back with this stuff and just paint it with that and that's how it gives the wet look that also helps it to hold on better so that's what you want after you get your rocks like this then you put them in you glue them down with tacky glue in your harbor lake whatever it is and then what you do when it's dry you come in with a real small brush and you mix a couple colors you take some black some tan some yellow maybe some raw sienna and what you'll do is do a real small brush you'll go around the edges of it the rock what that does is it creates a shadow I can tell you that from diving all my diving experience whenever there's a rock out there it always underneath there's always an area that just it washes out usually and it's a rock or a boat whatever it is so you want to create that shadow look so if you're doing a resin pour or you're doing a uh, just the caulking you still get that shadow effect you'll, you'll notice that on these it's very very important because it 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 makes the rocks jump out at you and here's a here's an example of now these this one right here again that boats out of cardstock and stuff like that and I've, I've had that at clinics before but again it's the foam rocks the caulking but the shadow is all important for everything that's most important here I'll pass these around right here these rocks you can see Now this is something, uh, this is polyfiber, and uh, you can see this is black, and black is the best. If you can find the black stuff, it's the best, because uh, you, you really don't want anything but black. And all you do with this stuff, very easy to do. Just take your cheap hairspray and you spray it. You flock it. More hairspray. It's important now to remember about this stuff that you want to stretch it real thin. Real thin. People want to get big clumps of it and they want to they, they use too much you want to stretch it real real thin you want the vine to be airy and then to plant them you simply come in with the scissors when it's dry and I, I spray lots of hairspray on this stuff so and then you just use it and you just take it and just plant it you know I'll just demonstrate on this right here you just dip it in tacky glue and then you just find an appropriate place and you just put it down like that and now you've got some great these are great because they are so important to scenery because they just hide everything all imperfections they hide you know things in scenery that you don't necessarily like cover it with a vine okay that's my philosophy hide it with a bush cover it with a blind with a vine because you it's they're easy easy scenic detail to do now if you can't find the black polyfiber then don't worry about it so much you can just get white and spray it black 
But again, you stretch it real thin and you get a paper on paper towels and first the hairspray is going to want to blow it all over the place. But what will end up happening is eventually you'll get where you'll have so much, you've made so many vines that you put the polyfiber on it won't go anywhere. <laughs> so we save, Johnny will tell you, we save all the old paper towels because you can just make vines so quick with it. You stretch it thin, spray it, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and they're an easy scenic detail. Now, with the wood, I brought this to show you. This is how you go from regular old wood, like this right here, and then you use a wood burner. And after you do the wood burning, you stain it, and then you can add your, your details to it, your barnacles, and again, you, you clear coat it all to make it look shiny, make it look wet. And uh, here's one with the barnacles on the bottom. It's the wood burner. I can't emphasize enough how much fun they are. But you've almost got to do it outside because you've got smoke. They, they'll stink up your house. They're, <laughs> okay. You, you really want to use them out in the garage or something like that. But you can have so much fun. You can get carried away with them. I mean, really, you can. And it, it's just a great, it's a great, great tool. I bought a professional one, it cost 150 bucks, but it was worth every penny. It's never given out on me. I burned lots of wood. That whole dock on there was all done with a wood burner. So the sunken rowboat, same thing, was all done with a wood burner when it was finished. Here's an example of that. Now for the sunken boat, again, you can see I made it out of cardstock. And what you do is you get, sometimes you have to glue two pieces together. For this one, I didn't do that, but sometimes you have to do that. And then what you do is you take and score your planking lines. And then you come in with a wood burner and burn that. And then I use, a, I'll paint it with a, sometimes I paint it first. This has actually been painted first. So, and then you just come in with a, I use a odorless mineral spirits and Payne's gray. That seals everything and that means a silverfish will never go near it. <laughs> okay. Because once it's sealed with that odorless mineral spirits, they want nothing to do with it. It'll be there forever. So I learned the hard way. I did a billboard one time on my beautiful billboard on my railroad. I was so happy with it. A friend of mine put lights on it. It just looked so great. I came back the next week and there was <laughs> the snake line going up like that. I was so mad. I painted all my signs and all my billboards and everything with uh, odorless mineral spirits to prevent that. But here's, a, here's what they look like when you're creating them. And here's one right there. Oh, let me have that back for just a second. Oh, that's all right. You're not going to break it. <laughs> uh, this right here, again, it's one of the rowboats. They're all out of cardstock. I don't think there's any wood in this one at all. And you can see the detailing with the, uh, the wood burner and stuff is pretty incredible. You just can't go wrong with it. You really can't. Now the sea oats, and uh, I do want to talk about them a little bit. I've got them out here somewhere. Here they are. Okay, the sea oats are just done with a cheap paintbrush like this. I also make uh, cattails out of these. Uh, they make excellent cattails. Okay, um, but. For the sea oats, you just all you do is um, you just paint them with a light green. I made I put some yellow in there and stuff like that. Probably didn't get the color exactly right. I'm not exactly thrilled with them, but it's my first attempt with them, so I'm going to live with it for now. But uh, 
I did those. For HO, of course, you'd cut them shorter for HO and uh, stuff. Uh, for, o, for O scale, that's about the right height. Um, you can also, like I said, if you're doing a cattails in O scale, you'd cut them way down here at the bottom. And of course, they'd be a darker green than this. Okay. I've got some I can pass around and show to you. But that's all there is with these, and the plumes on them are just simply nylon bristle bristles from one individual bristle and you dip it in tacky glue and then you stick it in an appropriate color of flocking material. In that case I use this right here. That's all there is to it and you get uh, really nice. Yeah, you can take these out. I'm going to hold these up first. You can see what they look like right here. I think that's still in focus. Very easy detail. You can take them out and look at them. You're not going to hurt them. Now, to do pull this off here. This is tacky glue, which I've talked about many times. You guys are all familiar with it, I'm sure, that have been to any of my clinics. I make a little puddle right here. Now, you get these plants. These again are from, I got these on Amazon, but there's a lot of, there's a process to these. You have to spray them with a flat fixative. Okay, again, and then I'll come in and do some colors like this one I painted. I just kind of dabbed on some darker green to try to give some shadows to it because I didn't want it to be here it is again you can see it I just didn't want it to be uh, just ordinary. Now to put flowers on these guys, it also enhances the look of them. Just dip that out there. This is a flowering type material. And I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations here. I'm going to grab this guy right here. Just covering the part I want the flowers to stick to. And I'm going to stick them in there like so. Any color flocking, the right uh, color flocking will work. I like this because it's got kind of a flowery look to it and stuff. It just makes the plant more interesting when you use it on your diorama. And I'll demonstrate this one too. Again, this is a this plant has been painted with a dark green after it was sprayed with flat fixative. And this I just want to give the illusion of of flowers. That's all I want. Again, you can see it just makes it more interesting, is all. And here's what they look like. Whoops, don't worry about it. Good catch. <laughs> now, again, it's just little things like that that make the difference. It's you just, if you're doing like these, if you're doing a bunch of You've got a bunch of plants like this. You just do all the little stuff at once. You know what I mean? You do. If you're going to put flowers on them, 
that's the step you do. You're gonna you spray them with flat fixative, you paint them with some green, whatever colors to tone them down, and then you go ahead and if I say, all right, I'm gonna add flowers to it, then you just that's what you do. That's your next step. So again, right here, perfect example. We're pretty bright, bright green stuff. And all I'm doing <coughs> and see how that changes that already it's already changed just by doing a simple thing like that that's all there is to it and uh, you can't go wrong with it it's just it's a little thing but it makes a difference and again, that would be a step you'd do all at once. You'd have, you buy a package of 90 or whatever you do, 90 different little plants, and then you do the steps. You spray it all on a flat wax paper like this. And then when you're done with that, then, then you just you do your green paint. And then you decide whether you're gonna put flowers on it, you're gonna leave them like they are. There's both, both methods there. But you can, you can see when you come up here, which I wanna demonstrate this one one deal here I've got. Oh, those are pollings, by the way. I'm going to demonstrate this one thing. This is, uh, again, a different color flock. You can buy these colors at the store. But it's real important. I'm going to take this guy right here. Same thing back into my tacky glue. And you know, for interest, you can, I didn't do too much of this, but for interest, you could even paint some of the leaves down here, make them more like they're dead or dying. But again, it's just a little stuff like that. And maybe I want some, some leaves down here that are, not so healthy. But that's, it's just that simple. You can just create different things, you know, put some black on here. You can do, you know, it's your world. You can do as Bob Ross used to say, it's your world, you can do what you, what you please. So you're, you're creating the, the illusion. I hope you don't get paint on you, but it'll dry pretty fast. So, but that's what you can do to make, make things more interesting. This guy's the same thing. These are like traveler's palms in my world. That's what they look like. Again, sprinkling the flock on there. And I'll hold that up. Again, this guy has been painted. I don't think I'm too close. Same thing. But it's it's really it's your world and you can you can do what you want. But the more the more you detail things, the better it's all going to look in the long run. It's just a fact the way it's going to be. Now, Johnny G and myself, we made these trees. And uh, these are some of the simplest trees you'll ever make, okay? And they look, you know, I'll hold this one up like that. And they look just, they look fantastic. Now, 
all you do with these is you you get an armature. This happens to be sagebrush, which is one of my favorites for gnarly oaks. But if you can't use that, you can use uh, you can find pieces, branches of sometimes the bloom part of crepe myrtles, or you can find a suitable branch. Well, if you use any of those, I recommend you dip them in 50/50 glue and water, hang them upside down, let them dry real good. But the next step is real easy. This is super tree material, which the store can get for you and all you do is you just take and spray it with 3M spray glue outside that stuff is super powerful I mean really bad but you spray it good you have about five minutes working time and then you just take pieces of super tree you cut and just stick on the armature just like that that's all there is to it then you just spray it with a black, flat black, and uh, then a gray primer. That gets your, your look as you want. Then you just take your cheap hairspray. And I'm going to spray it right over this stuff right here. I always spray over trees I've already made. I hope I don't make anybody pass out. I apologize in advance. This is a multicolored green flock. It's got about four colors in it. There, now you can kind of see it right there. I'm going to spray it with a little more hairspray. Now we used to make these with uh, with hot glue pot and gluing the branches on individually, but that takes so much more time. And unfortunately, there was a guy in a magazine recently that was demonstrating how to make these. And he was doing the hot glue method. And then, you know, you get little spider strings that hang down. He suggested you take a lighter. <laughs> and, and this was in the article, and light the strings and burn them all off. Well, I have news for him. <laughs> the super tree material is highly flammable. And so is the ground foam and everything else on there. So you get anywhere near it. And... It's going to ignite. Then you have fire damaged trees. Yeah, there you go. There's one right there. You can see. Now I want to talk about these guys. These are a pain in the butt to make. I'm just not going to tell you anything different about them. And I don't think I even want to try to demonstrate these, but I'm just pulling them all out like this. I'll hold them up there where you can see them. These are climbing vines. And the way you make these is you make a, get a puddle of tacky glue. And then I use these leaves. You could use this flocking right here for them. You could just use that. Um, but I like it. I want it to be bigger. So what I did is I used these leaves here. I have four different shades. Now these won't work in HO scale. Okay, this is this is strictly O scale or bigger, but it won't work in. It's just the leaf is too big. But you can open the top and look at them. Well, you can see them there. But here's this. There's another shade. You can see the different shades. And again, are these the ones that you can buy? You can buy a little clipper thing to go through, and it punches out all kinds of leaves. Well, it, that could be how those are done. I don't know. But that, I don't know if I'd want to try doing that many of them. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, you can see it again, I'm holding it up. But these can go up the side, like this one building on the shore, you'll see these climbing up the side there. There's a palm tree back there in the back that's got them wrapping around it. Uh, but I'll pass these around. But again, you dip them, you run the string, the thread, through pay, right, ordinary thread like this right here, and you just run it through the tacky glue and then you dip it in the pile of leaves. And then you have to let it set and dry. And if you want to put flowers on it, that's a whole other step. But the, the problem is the leaves want to come off. They want to fall off all the time. And so you're constantly, constantly dealing with that. And so that's, that's part of the hassle of it all. So, but again, whoops. Okay. Now these are these are weed tufts. This is important detail. John and John and I have made lots of these at the uh, train club. I'll hold them up here where you can see them. Now there's a guy, I think an Aussie guy, who came up with a way to make these. You can also buy them. The store can get them for you. They have some wonderful shades. One of the things I do with Weed Tough So, and I recommend that people do this, is make sure that you dry brush the weed tufts. In other words, if it's green, dry brush them with yellow or tan before you take them off because they're glued down to a, a stick. The same way with these guys, uh, you can open the bag and look at them, take them out. But again, that's what you want to do is make sure that you make sure that you uh, dry brush them just to kind of highlight them a little bit. I've said this before, but you look at my shirt and you see the different highlights on it. And uh, it's, it's important. It's an important thing to do. Now, here you go. Now, the, uh, the beach. The beach was... Uh, the beach was done by sifting sand. And this is the product you end up with. This is fine powdered sand, okay? Now I have different colors of, of sand that I put down. There's even some, some little bit of orange dirt in various places, because I wanted to variety it up. But these are the screens you use. This is the second screen. The first thing that screen you use is just a regular household big strainer. And I recommend just going to the beach and getting the sand. <coughs> okay. I didn't do that. I went and bought a bag of sand and it was all wet and I had to put it in the microwave and I had to over and over again and stir it until I got it all dried out so I could even sift it. And I just recommend that you just go to the beach, get the sand, be exactly what you need. When you're done sifting it with the first kitchen strainer, then you break out this guy and sift it through this. Now it'll be pretty it'll be pretty good. But if you want to get it really fine and you break out this guy and you sift it through this and uh, it will come out powder. It also works for dirt, if you want powdered dirt. And again, it's important in, in scale, in scales to keep that, everything in mind. I'm gonna pass this around here. And I'll just hold that up so you can see how really fine that is. Because in HO, if you use just regular sand without sifting, it's going to be out of scale. It's not going to look right. It's like trying to use real water on your railroad. It's never going to look right. It's never going to be in scale. It just won't. I'll pass this around so you can see it. But that's always what ends up going on top. It's very, very important. Okay, now 
I passed this around at my, I think my last clinic or whatever, but I brought it back because it, it's a larger scale, of course, but it demonstrates. You have just a little bit of everything here. You have those big leaves I was talking about. You have the uh, vines I was talking about. You have the plants I was talking about. And just everything. You have one of the, this is one of the more expensive palms I was talking about. And uh, you got the water with the caulk and the foam action, which I didn't have time to put any of that in there. But again, you can see just the whole process here. And you get all the uh, jaggedness just by cutting and breaking off. And that's what you get. Now I think, let's see if there's anything else I need to cover here. Oh yeah, I want to talk about this. Now, there's different sizes of this stuff, but here, Here is an HO shark. Okay. You can take them out of the bag. And then here, I haven't finished this shark yet. I've been painting around, but this is an O scale. He was actually a thrasher shark. And I actually cut off the back tail here because he had a big long whip coming up out of there. Because I didn't want to, I didn't want a thrasher shark. So, and it almost now has a shape of a bull shark. That's what he reminds me of. He has a total shape of a bull shark, which I got him a white tip on there, but I may alter that. And then this is a little ray. Looks like a cow ray to me. It's not a stingray. But uh, these are interesting details, especially if you're poor in a resin pour. Um, these are interesting details that you can add. And uh, you can spray them with a dull coat, and then you can pretty much do whatever you want to them. Uh, John's going to name that one Jungle Boogie. Okay, uh, well, I want to talk real quick about the pour. I had kind of a disaster here. I tried to use blue tape when I poured the resin on this. And to my horror, about an hour and a half later, I went out in the garage and it was all leaking out. And I, I lost $30 of resin on the floor. <laughs> So, you know, and you're trying to go on there and you're trying to, you're trying to get the blue tape and trying to, there's just no way. The resin, once it starts coming out, there's just no way to stop it. And so I had to wait for that to dry. That's why I was up till 1.30 in the morning working on this. I had to wait till that to dry before I could come back and uh, do a second pour. So then I put my head together with one of my buddies out in uh, Iowa he does, he does water clinics all the time for, he's a really funny guy, he's a DJ for Twin Cities and he does a real fun kind of, just a funny guy. His clinics are hilarious. But he teaches people how to pour resin. That's mainly what the clinic's about. So he's laughing and telling him I leaked all over the place. So he says, all right. He says, well, try duct tape and hot glue. Hot glue the bottom of the duct tape. So what, that's what I did. I, I put duct tape around it, and then I hot glued each layer around it very carefully. And then I went ahead and uh, was, uh, thought I was okay. I come out in the morning, and <laughs> it had pushed away some of the duct tape, so I had to quickly go and get some more duct tape to tighten it up, so it pushed it back. Well, the problem with that is the resin pour was done at like 
tw you know, 11.30 at night. And the problem with that is <laughs> the resin has already started to gel some. It's still liquid, but it doesn't want to go back exactly the way you want it to. So you have to kind of push it around with a brush and, and it does kind of level out some, but it doesn't level out as good as it, it did. So again, you just want to, you want to make sure with the, and I'll never do anything but duct tape and <laughs> hot glue from now, never again. I've had too many disasters. Dan can tell you the disaster I had at the club where a bunch of uh, duct tape, he had to fix it. I, I, I lost probably $30 worth of resin at the, at the Suncoast Club just the same way. I tried two pours on this river and it was went underneath the, underneath the railroad and we were just making an illusion of it going underneath, but it actually did go underneath, but you just couldn't find the, uh, you know. So anyway, so that's, that's, that's about it. You make sure that you're sealed everywhere, take your time. And then of course, once you pour the resin, walk away and don't come back for a while. The crystal clear caulk was on the top and then I sealed that with Mod Podge this morning before I came here. So I got up at 6.30 and that's the first thing I did was I sealed that because that had to dry last night. And uh, wood on the dock, by the way, of course, is painted with a little green. It's a uh, green to emphasize that kind of look that wood gets when it's older like that. That is not a dock that you'd want to walk on a bare feet. You'd have splinters in your feet right away. If you've ever been on those kind of docks, you know what I'm talking about. You are, if you're on bare feet, you're walking very, very careful. So anyway, guys, thanks for coming. Uh, it was, uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you try this scenery. It's, it, it's very uh, challenging, but it's a lot of fun. And if you go through all the steps, you'll be successful. You really will. And you can always just work on a small diorama and then morph it into something bigger later on if you want to do that. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So thank you guys for coming.